So in this video I will show you how I use my lithium iron phosphate battery it also in the winter because my battery the BMS of the battery does not have any low temperature cutoff so just to prote protect the cells I basically made a, a heater uh, the heater is underneath I, I show you later on the footage how I created it and the whole or a circuit of 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 the whole heater system so that I can also use it in in freezing temperatures so now I'm cutting this heating bed or like this tank heater to the right size I'm also checking if there are no wires uh, underneath but there's also some space to the I don't know if you can see it there's some space to the heating to the heating element so I can cut it through so that it fits properly. So basically this is how it looks after I sticked it on the metal sheet. Um, this is a five milli five millimeter aluminium uh, plate and um, I cut it the, the heater pads to size so that it properly fits and also the size of of this metal sheet uh, fits exactly underneath the lithium iron phosphate battery. So I also forgot to mention that uh, I put a second temperature sensor underneath uh, to double check the temperature and uh, yeah it's just 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 for safety reasons. So this is the isolation of the lithium iron phosphate battery um, underneath is this um, aluminium block with the heater with the heater heater pad on it and this is the I have a I have here a switch for I have here a switch for the the temperature sensor that regulates the temperature measured here and then is linked to the B2B um, B2B loader because Victron Energy the the smart network doesn't work on the B2B charger so because I have one temperature temperature sensor also for the um, Victron smart network but I don't know why but with the DC to DC charger it doesn't work so I have to basically at the remote switch I have uh, I've connected the one temperature sensor to it and now it uh, basically uh, cuts off the connection when it's below I think five degrees and this is the switch for the heating so basically now the heating pad is switched on and as you can see here 11.2 degrees and this is just a safety um, safety sensor um, because the heating pad has a has their own thermo thermo sensor and now this is a second temperature sensor which basically uh, controls um, the the whole heating pad if it if it gets uh, above 40 degrees it then cuts off and with the, the heating pad itself it cuts off um, I think it's 27 degrees or something so now uh, basically now it's it's heating so basically this is the heating system here um, so I have two sources where I can charge the battery which is from the DC to DC charger and from the uh, for, from the solar panels um, but I also have a third option uh, just f from the the normal grid 230 volt uh, but when I'm on the road I just use uh, the, the options from the DC to DC charger and the uh, solar panels and from the solar panels is it's really easy because in the smart network I have also the Victron temperature sensor uh, you can plug uh, the, the charging 
uh, when it's below I don't know five degrees but for some reasons the DC to DC charger do not have the options um, so I kind of use this this connection with the ro remote remote uh, input and then I also have a temperature sensor to detect it so this is for the heating and this is for for the the DC to DC charger if it's below five degrees it cuts off the the remote connection so basically that's it uh, you can write me a comment down below what you think about my heating system